everybody and welcome to another edition of our M13 set review. Today we're going to talk about all of the black cards. All of them. Every single one and I'm here with... Except Nicol Bolas. Not except Nicol Bolas. I'm here with Brad Nelson. Yeah. I'm Evan Irwin. These are magic cards. Let's do it. Let's chat. All right. So first up for our black cards, we have Blood Reckoning. <laughs> you know, it's not just punishing them attacking you. It's your Planeswalkers too. Yeah. Yeah. I like how it just sort of encompasses all of it. Yeah. If you tap a guy that is not for mana or an ability. You know, there was a time when they tried to like not put the word Planeswalker on a bunch of cards, mm -hmm. and now they're just like, eh, whatever. Well, they, they didn't want eh. to. They, at the beginning, I could see them not wanting to make it look gimmicky. Yeah. So now it's part of the game, and it's just a thing. It's, it's just like now you know a text you or a planeswalker you control. Mm -hmm. Like it's just like another piece of text that no one's really going to blink an eye at. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I didn't even really notice it much until I sort of you know sort of was like, well, what's what's interesting about this card? Well, you know, it's you or a planeswalker. That's sort of actually kind of a new thing. I, I mean, I like it. I like having planeswalker on text. It's fun. Yeah, I, I mean, it's part of the game now. We have taken them in as our own. We have. Yeah. We've embraced yeah, them. We love you, Planeswalkers. They are terrific. Now, the Blind Hunter Bat. I'm sorry. The Blood Hunter Bat. Blood, yeah. It's, it's worse than Blind Hunter Bat, and it can even see. It well, doesn't even make any sense. Well, it was just Blind Hunter. It wasn't, there was no bat, even though it looked like a bat. It wasn't a bat? I think it might have been Creature Bat, but they didn't, yeah. they didn't have bat in the name. Okay. Either way, I love the crap out of that creature. Yeah, it was really good. The creature was awesome. Yeah, like you got the the drain, and then you got it again when it haunted and stuff. It was sweet. And this guy, you're still getting plenty of value. No, this guy is actually really good. Yeah, I mean, black is hyper aggressive right now in limited, mm -hmm. and just having the life swing of two is just like really good. Like for races, and it gives you a flyer. Like black doesn't have too many flyers, so mm -hmm. gives you a flyer. I I'm impressed with this card. It is very scary to be staring down a bunch of aggressive black creatures and then just get drained for two. Yeah, I mean, they're they're certainly sort of trying to give black its own sort of angle and identity that isn't just like kill things yep. or drain some life always. But like when you drain a little life and you give it an aggressive angle, that's oh, yeah. a good thing. Oh, I like it. I, I definitely like black now becoming very aggressive, and you have sign and blood that can can actually be targeting them sometimes, which mm -hmm. it never did before. I don't know about never. You rarely did, though. I think that's going to be a play Rare. that happens a lot. The, the issue in, in Magic is that you just basically can never eh, deal in absolutes. Mm -hmm. Because absolutes just don't actually work in Magic. Okay. You're never going to blah, blah, blah. Well, there was that one time. And Blood Throne Vampire returns, coming back. It's Hungry as ever. Rawr, ready to chow down and get bigger just for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then get smaller again. All right. Cower in fear. I'm cowering. Cowering. Yeah. This card is awesome. I just love Blowout Unlimited. It's a really good card. I love the name. I love the art. Haven't read the flavor text. Probably love that too. Probably. One second. I'm just saying. I'm going final. Blah, blah, blah. Nickel balls. Blah, blah, blah. That's what it is, right? Yada, yada. I liked it. He did. It was a he, good story. You saw him right there. Enjoy reading that. I actually don't know how to read. I was pretending. He was. He was just like words and the symbols and stuff. He ghostwrites all my articles. I do. I'm Brad Nelson. What? I almost made top eight of a pro tour. And then I made top eights of pro tours. Little did they know. I grew, just I grew all the hair out. Bloop. Got rid of all of it. Bloop. Bloop, bloop. Cower and Fear is sweet and limited. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a blow up. It's an instant, which is huge. Yeah. Three mana. All your guys get smaller. It's going to kill probably some guys. Oh, and, and because of Exalted, a lot of creatures have one toughness. Oh, man. Like, smash all in after they declare blocks. Cower and Fear. Yeah, really good card. It's going to do insanely terrible things to people. Crippling Blight. I actually saw a really interesting comment this morning on Twitter where they said this actually breaks up a lot of stalemates. This is a pretty sweet card to put on a fog bank, for example. Oh, because it can't block. Yeah, yeah. Like this is a this is a tool for black to allow them not to block. This is like a really weird, um, not weird, but this is a really interesting to me sort of sh sh uh, focus shift in that red is starting to get like card draw stuff, and so black is starting to get some of the things that red had, like mm -hmm. you know a lot more aggressive creatures and cr uh, things that don't let them block. Why is red getting so much card draw? It's so dirty to discard it, and draw a card because it needs an angle. Yeah, that's true. All red had was like little dorks and drag. 
damage. And the creature, all the creatures got better, so they and they can't really make the red creatures better. I mean, they did, and then we got Goblin Guide, and well, that was I, sweet. I think we need more Goblin Guides. I love Goblin Guide. I actually saw a really terrific uh, screenshot yesterday on uh, Facebook where there's like, remember this article from Randy Bueller talking about like it was it was like a designer test mm -hmm. article, and one of the cards that was in the designer test was uh, one red for a two one that can't block. And like basically universally, they were just like, this card is way too good, and we can never print this card. And red should not have these like small aggressive beaters. And it's it was it's surreal, you know. Wow. We're just like, really, this was the thinking like five to ten years yeah. ago. Like it's crazy. And that's like one mana four three whatevs. Yeah, or, <laughs> eh, you can do better. Don't than care. That. Really, play the Jupid five five me. Yeah. Yeah. Dark favor. Well, if you got the the white version, which is divine. Yeah. Yeah, the dark. <laughs> but I don't get why. Like, here's an, here's one thing that this card alone needed an up, upgrade. Really? I, yes, because I don't know why you have to lose life. It's not that good of an effect to lose life anymore. It was before. Well, I also know that sort of thematically, you want like the white one gains the life, and the black one loses the life. Well, why the can't they make the them lose here. life? You know, like it, 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 it. If they really wanted to do it like full blown thematic, you know, whatever, you would actually lose three life. Well, they could make your opponent lose three life. Well, but then that's way too good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and? You know, they could make him lose a life or no life change at all. Like, I understand that that works and you want, like, the balance, but why make this card do something bad to you? Because, Cards are so good now. Because it's a dark favor. It's not like a totally awesome high five favor. Sure, fine flavor, fine blah, flavor, blah, flavor, next card. Diabolic revelation, what's going on? I love this Ooh, art. Foils are going to be worth like one thousand dollars. One thousand dollars. You heard it's, it here. One thousand dollars. I will sell you the first foil I find. I would like in like give me five years, okay? Give me five years. Give me the Russian foil, and how much is it going to be worth? A dollar. I don't know why are we saying this card's going to be card, insane. It's not insane in construct. It's insane. It's insane in EDH. Like this and is like why an Rush, EDH why is Russian all, big? I, I don't it's know. It's the most pimp version of any foil you can have. Why? Because it's the hardest to find. Oh, I thought maybe their foil lead system was way cooler. No, no. I mean, like Japanese foils used to be the top, right? Yeah. And then like Russian. Now I don't know exactly where Korean is right now because apparently the Korean translations were like really terrible and really bad, um, and the foiling process was like weird or wrong or something. I don't know. Okay. But the Korean foils are in there somewhere. But right now all I know is there's there's English and then there's Japanese and then there's Russian. And Diabolic Revelation is a card that is meant for a casual space. And I bet the foil is going to look cool. Yeah, it's going to be totally sweet. And like in EDH, when you have like 800 mana, you're like, mm, go get like everything I want. And for just my combo off. Yes. You just like build up combos that you didn't even have designed. You're like, that's pretty much what they do. I mean, yeah, this card is going to be gross in EDH. Yeah. Or commander. That's sorry, oh, commander. Sorry, commander. Right. Commander. Um, don't don't get mad at me. Official branding policies prevent us from calling it EDH. Disciple of Bolas, however, is sweet. I have a different opinion, but I'm what? just I'm just going to ruin all your Look, fun. I am a simple caveman lawyer, and I'm telling you, this card <laughs> is sweet. Continue. Okay. Go on, crush my hopes and dreams. I really wanted the card to be really good. And? But it's probably not constructed playable. And Just in a li little? Maybe. No. There has to be a black white deck mm. that can use this. To like, sacrifice a token and to draw a card? Yeah, with Sublime Archangel making it like crazy, stupid, huge. You just set a four mana card and another four mana card. Yep. I didn't say they fit on the curve or anything. What? I'm reaching here. I like to say, look, I love Momentous Fall. Yeah. I thought that card was sweet. That card ended up being terrible. And it comes with a body, and yeah, it's cool. But even in Limited, like, you don't actually, it's it's so much more aggressive than I thought the form was going to be, which I've been saying that about every form. You keep saying these things about aggression. You got some, uh, you know, management issues, bro? You want to talk about it? Don't hurt me. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't know if I want to talk about you anymore. Okay. I'm scared. Let's go back to this card. This card sucks. Oh, you my God. You want to argue with me? No. Okay. This card's terrible. Sorry. This one, too. That's, I like this one. That's a cool card. It's just, you know. It's it's flexible. It's good and limited. Like, it, it's never like you're a high pick playable. But, like, if you got a Nighthawk, you got another Nighthawk. What was the problem with Raise Dead? Why can't they just reprint Raise Dead? Did this not target? I think that was the issue. Well, it also says Raise Dead. 
I think they just wanted it to be more politically correct. Well, also I think it might be a little um, with uh, sort of the zombify effect. Yeah. I mean, you sort of, th in your mind, it sounds like you're actually putting it into play, I think. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, Distant Tomb's a fine card. It works great. Yeah. Like it. The rest. I'm happy this Yay. is back. As tournament players, we love this card. I do. This card needs to exist in a tournament environment. And I hate losing to combos and planeswalkers. That's why I will duress you. Despise is not good enough. No. Not. Don't make me pay two wizards. Yeah, it's just not. I oh, despise, I thought. Distress. No, despise. Yeah, I mean, no, A, distress is certainly not good enough. But B, like, despise was supposed to be like a sweet uncommon. Like, everyone was really excited about it. I know I was. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all oh, right, man. Like, another twist on duress that's, like, new and different. And it stinks. I mean,. I definitely think if they want a discard card to be playable in Constructed, in Standard, mm -hmm. uh, it just has to be Inquisition. Inquisition was unbelievable, it was really good, no, and... Wasn't, did you get to play with Thoughtseize? That card was nuts. Well, Thoughtseize was nuts, sure. Thoughtseize was sweet. You don't want to foil Thoughtseize going over a hundred bucks now? Let's stop talking about prices, that's what Ben does. We talk about the cards and what they do. Oh, I see how it is. I talk about all the magic stuff. They're worth money, they're collectible, it's over in casual, it's in but standard, I don't know how much cards it's in cost. modern, it's in legacy. It would be hilarious. You know what You know would be funny? Star City sends me to a show to buy. Let's not. You're like, I don't know, this is expensive. Dusk Mantle Prowler. Sweetest art, I love it. He's jumping, but he's a vampire, so he should fly anyway. Uh, I don't get it. Wait, why do vampires have to fly? They all fly. What? Since when do they fly? Like, in the stories, don't they fly? No, not necessarily. Some of them fly. It depends on the story. Okay. It's like they make it up. It's weird. Um, Dust Mantle Pl Prowler, however, is uh, very aggressive. We were yes. talking about the aggression. Very aggressive. That man is bringing them beats. Oh, yeah. He, he comes into play right away. He's a 3-3 three, three on his own. If he has another Exalted, he's a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, man. He helps another creature get Exalted. So, like, even if you don't want to attack with him, he pumps something else. Like, he's a beater. He's really good. Flavorfully, I mean, as a vampire and a rogue, you know what I mean? So he's sneaking around. Yeah. The artwork is terrific. Like, this is, like, just a home run card for me. Yes, I, I love this card. Awesome card. I wish it was on a constructed playable because that art is constructed worthy. Oh, the art's sweet. Duty Bound Dead. I like this guy a lot. Dirtle, dirtle. Dirtle, he's dirtle, 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 dirtle. But he dirtle. Like, there's no uh, Akrazan Squire or no. Yeah, yeah. That's the 1 1. You know, so this is basically the Akrazan Squire of the set. Yeah, and it's it's fine. I mean, it's it, it is better than I, I'm saying, but like it is definitely like the card that gets overplayed because it is like a one drop and it gets regeneration. And I mean, really, like the cards like seem like pure value. It's a one mana one three when attacking, or it's a one mana o oh, two so it can block, or it regenerates when it blocks the huge stupid huge green creatures. Huge 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 huge. And I think it's fine. It's fine. It's just not bad. It's it's fine. Fine. Essence Drain. Ah, this card is awesome. Kills you, I kills that. It. It and now, now it's back. Mm -hmm. And it kills a bunch of guys. Five, I mean, it's perfect. Like, five mana to deal three, to gain three, to deal three to your face, to Archaeomancer back and deal more. And then you're, just, you're just draining it right out. Yeah. And you're just opening up the spigot and let it flow. Can, why can't you... Essence scatter and essence drain. Hmm. You need to scatter the essence of the drain. Ah, you're too deep for me, dude. It's like Jack Handy up in here. All right, man. Giant Scorpion is an all-star from Zendikar. The guy was awesome House. at Zendikar. Woo. Because that format was all about the two ones. Yeah. Like everything was like blah tag, blah blah tag tag, blah tag, and they'd be like Giant Scorpion. Mm -hmm. Breaks on, boys. We hey, we're gonna yes. chill out here for a minute. I think this card is awesome. It's not as good as the spider version in the set because it has reach. But this guy, Which we'll get to. yeah, this guy is very good. He's gonna see a lot of play. Uh, I wish it was a one four. I know that sounds weird, but everything deals three in the set. I want it to be as good as it was in Zendikar. Dude, we're, it, like, Black has Exalted now. It's basically a 2-4 attacking or higher. With, like the, One of the great things about Giant Scorpion was that it was very hard to block, too. Yeah. You know, And now it's even harder to block because you get all these Exalted guys yeah. making it, it tougher. Yeah, this card is very good. I'm happy it comes back. Like, So many cards are in the set that I'm just like, yes, thank you, Wizards, for bringing them back. I loved playing with them before. Now I, I got to play them again. I think M13 is better than M12. By a million miles. Not close. Like, I think this is actually going to be my favorite 
core set I've ever played. This like, is definitely M11 was way, close. Way high up there. Like, I loved playing M11, but I think M11 this nice. one, I'm going to, I, I want to see what happens on Moto and see if I drafted a ton. Because I drafted M11 a lot. I loved it. Yep. I mean, I didn't touch 12. Just did <laughs> not like 12. It was super aggressive, but like nothing worked together. But th I think the they put. Thirst was weird. Like, I think they put a lot of work into this set. They certainly look like it. I love the fact, like, it was so sweet because they were talking about, like, why didn't you put the Titans in, like, M13? And if you remove the Titans, why didn't you put, like, another cycle? Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, we actually tried to not put a cycle in and just make, like, standing cards on their own yep. that were sweet. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Yeah, because no. Because one more cycle of. We gave you equipment. Features. What? <laughs> Equipments. Equipments. Harbor Bandit. He's a bandit. Yeah. He's, eh. he's I, just of of all the creatures that get the bonus when you play the the appropriate land type, probably the most boring. He is very boring, but his ability is really good. Like it's better than Trample. Yeah, but he doesn't become a four four either. No, but he gets unblocked ability. He does. He turns into his own little creeping tar pit. He just creeping bandit. Yeah, I think it's fun. Creepy Bandit would have been a cooler name, I think. Creepy Bandit? <laughs> or Creepy. <laughs> no, Creepy Bandit. He's like looking into the window and then there's a girl showering inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> he is looking in a window, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like Peeping Bandit? Man. How you doing? How you and on? he has no weapons in his hands. Weird. What is he doing? Knight of Infamy is a two mana, two one. Yes. And he's the mirror version of the knight uh, of... White. Of white. I can't remember right now. Um, but either way... He's awesome. Yes, very good. He is going into my cube. This guy has been absolutely pushed. I absolutely love him. I love the design. Creatures get better. Hell yeah. Yes, very good. Dies to the gutshot test. Doesn't matter. He don't care. He don't care. Don't care. He like Honey Badger. He don't care. Don't. Well, Honey Badger says something that we can't say. We don't, we don't, we don't say that. Okay. Liliana of the Dark Realms. I've, I went on about this girl. Go for it. Two colorless black black. Three Check. loyalty. Check. Does does do those go with a different planeswalker? Mm. Two mana symbols. Mm. Two colorless. Mm. Three. Okay, it's not Jace. But it's not Jace. It's not close. Like if that plus one ability was so, for Rexian Arena. If you pump Liliana up, and it gives you an extra card to discard to your trading post. Trading me postersons. No, I, I think this card is fine. Uh, it is what a planeswalker should do. Um, it so isn't smoky. overpowered. It isn't. It's going to do something that's great. Like it, it helps you make all your land jobs, which is really good for a black deck mm -hmm. uh, because they don't really have a source of card advantage. So it's very hard to hit. Like sometimes she's going to help because you can like play one less land if you play a couple in, her, in a deck. Mm -hmm. It's going to help you hit your like six drops more on time. So like when you flood, she's just going to be a spell that you use to kill something. And when you're when you don't have enough mana, she's going to find the lands for you. I think that there is a R and D member or someone in the uh, in the development team who is very proud of themselves in that the word swamp appears in all three abilities. She's the swampiest swamp swampy That's true, ever. Yeah. Swamp a swamp. And like what? I mean, <laughs> I just if that if that first ability had been Phyrexian Arena, how good? Lose life, draw a card. Uh, insane, insane. Well, top five, right? Top five, what? Planeswalkers. Yeah. Um. No. I mean, we got Big Jace, Baby Jace, Elspeth. Big, Big Jace, Baby Jace, Gideon. Elspeth, Gideon, and Liliana, and this tiny, the tiny Liliana. Liliana, yeah. 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 The veil. All right. And then Tezzeret, and then Tezzeret. Well, which order? Well, the the one that's blue first, and then the other blue one. Oh, so just pure blue and then blue one? No, I, I, I was just trying to... I thought just, you were just yeah, trolling yeah. me. Uh, yeah, well, obviously, the old mono blue one, because that's how it got on the Pro Tour. Oh, we I broke that card. I'm not on the Pro Tour. I did one time. I got voted in, sorry. Anyway. He uh, did real good, though. You did, did you? All of my rounds went to three games, and I almost beat Rich Ho in round one if the fetch land had been for a swamp instead of any other basic land type. I don't want to talk about it. I played Zoo. Whatever. What? It's Tribal Flame Zoo and stuff. Anyway. Then he played Nationals and he ran up against like PT Champion, PT Champion, PT Champion. <laughs> that story's good. You should go back and watch that that uh, magic show because I'm in it a lot. He's in it a lot. It's like Nationals 2009 or something. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even get interviewed back then. I was like not cool enough to get interviewed. Oh my God. Liliana of the Dark Realms, however, is sweet. I think 
it's probably going to take Ravnica get in here before she actually, you know, makes a lot of waves. Not but. yeah. I actually might be playing one copy of it at the open in a couple weeks. I'm working on a deck. A whopping one copy. Get out of here. Hey. 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 Oh, you want credit? Oh yeah. It's, it's, yeah. In, it's in your sideboard, right? No, it's in the main. Is it really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's going with three of the other Lilianas. Come on, it's a really good combo. I know you don't want to play like two of the same Lilianas, okay. but the first one kills a guy, and and like it, it can kill itself. Right. You know. Like, so you can kill it, play the other one, get a swamp. It's too high to actually, like, die from the actual board state. So I think they work pretty well they together. They work fairly well together. I love the fact, again, and that this has four abilities. I will contend it has four abilities. It has three. It has four. It kills it or it pumps it. It kills it or it pumps it. These are two separate things. There's an or in there. You know what they did? They saved space. And here's her shade. Her shade is sweet. This is like the coolest shade ever. That is the sweetest shade. I, I didn't even know it gave it land. Like I was playing the pre-release and I played Glenjo and then he like played on turn four and he just like searches up like, whoa, what are you? Hey. Oh, wow. It gives you a land? What? Borderland Ranger sweet. for black. Man. Since when does black get like a go find your land That's yeah, really good. What? Just certainly an oddity. And terrific and limited, like. Mm -hmm. But every time, God, even now, I looked at the video and I'm like, oh, it's got flying. No, no it, it doesn't. doesn't. Why do you keep doing that, wizards? Did you hear? It's literally flying. Have you heard that story yet? What? The one when I played Kai? No. You guys will like this. Here we go. So I'm playing Kai at the Pro Tour. And we sit down, and he says something about, I don't think one of my opponents read one of the cards. You know what it did? Because he passed it, like, at the draft. He, like, he said he got a card, like, too late. And I was like, I don't think you know what your first rare did, because I got it fourth. And he's like, oh, I don't think that card's good. But he kind of, like, looked insulted, like, you really think I don't know every card in this set? <laughs> so He gave me that Kai stare. Yeah, out. so I browned him game one. And then game two, I, like, play a creature, kill his creature, Play Homicide of Seclusion, hit him twice with it. Play a, uh, the Dross guy, the 5-5 five, five for 6, that whenever guy dies, draw a card. Yeah. Next turn, killed three guys, drew three cards, died three turns later. Don't know how. But So then we go to game three, and the cameras, the cameras come to our feature match. And Kai is playing, so we get like three or four minutes on camera. But all Matt game, Kai's just playing really weird. Like, he is not doing any, like, I don't even know what page we're both on at all. But it ain't the same one. It's not the same one. It was just really weird. He was doing weird things. And I had the shade in play, the un, the one that has Undying. Yep. And he's just playing real weird. He's like, he bounced it at end of turn once. I'm like, what? The, all right. And I played it again. And I said, go. And I couldn't attack him. He's got flyers. He, like, like didn't attack with a flyer one turn. I had no flyers. I'm just, cameras come over, literally dead on board. Just dead. I'm waiting. Like the cameras come over, so I'm like, yeah, I'll just let Kai kill me on camera. I'm like I'm not gonna scoop. Say go. I have one man open. Like there's no spell, and like he's just like sitting there, tanking, tanking, and he's just looking at the board and just, just thinking, thinking. The camera gets over there. Like I don't know what the commentator's doing. He's just like, just like attack you. And just looks at me, and I'm like, all right, dude. And I like, <laughs> extend my hand, and he instantly picks up my sheet. And he's like. It doesn't have flying? <laughs> <laughs> Hall of Famer. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Bark of the Vampire is terrifically flavorful. Yes. Uh, I like this card. I think it's really good in the races, the aggressive side of this. Uh, in black, I think you can, when you get lifelink and deal some extra damage, it's worth, like, the two for one your opponent might get you next turn. Like you mm -hmm. play this, you hit him, you gain some life, you deal them extra damage, and then they kill the guy. It's like that's fine because like the life was probably relevant. And well, one of the things you know I thought was like really interesting and, and in a ways bad about Abyssin Restored Limited was the common two four angel with lifelink. I mean, you, everything about that set. Well, mm -hmm. everything, but that in particular was one of those things where I was just like, my God, that card is pushed and, and really way too low of a of a rarity for me mm -hmm. because it, new players sometimes have a d difficulty understanding. That like if I have a four four and they have that two four life linker, you know, and I hit them for four damage, 
they're going to hit me back, and then we're just going to be at parity. Yeah. Like, your 4-4 is not better than their 2-4 because it has lifelink. Mm -hmm. And so this actually gives plus 2, plus 2. If you think of the other ones, you know, like the uh, tricks of the trade or whatever it was, yeah. the, um, you know, it only gives plus 2, plus 0. So if this only gave plus 2, plus 0 in lifelink, it would be a much worse card, but now yes. it actually it pumps on both sides. Oh, so. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a true blood vampire. When you, like, drink some of the blood, the mark of the vampire, then mm. it makes you stronger. Wow. Yeah, so you get the butt. True blood. Mine rot. Mine rot's sweet. I'll discard this negate. Yep. I think like three people would get that. Well, but if they do, and if they liked it, they're going to like it. It video. wasn't even a bad, it wasn't even a good joke. I didn't they'll say it, it was good. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Most of our jokes. All right. <laughs> Mine rot, however, that's a good card. That's a good sideboard card that people forget about that yeah. I've seen pop up from time to time. And uh, it also combines well with our rat friends that we'll talk about here in a bit. Yes. And uh, I just, I love this sort of, this for me is a very iconic card for black. In aggressive sets, mine rots can be very good hmm. because you need more of all your cards to do things. True. And if you're trying to curve out, like it's good against six drops because they, if they discard their lands, they can't cast it yet. Like you have to sit and wait for a land for a couple extra turns. and It's really good and limited. Yeah, it's like, amazing and limited. In Sealed, it's like an all-star because mm -hmm. the thing, like, in Sealed, normally you're just like, you know, eking out advantage yep. and then, like, the, the turns go long and you have these removal spells with these bombs in your hand and then you're just like, mine rot them away and, you know, you... Next just, turn I'm going to switch through or next turn we do this and you're like, boop, boop, nope. Boop, boop. Nope, no thanks. Mine rot does work. I love it. Oh, wow, the flavor text is insane. Did you see that? The flavor text is, what a pity. You should have written it down. Manifest, that's really good. <laughs> that's really good. You really should have. Murder. Dun, dun, dun. Red ah. rum. Red rum. Dude, it's freaking murder. It's murder. It took how long to get here? Years, murder. but we're finally here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Into the ears. Into the ears of pain. <laughs> murder. It is sweet. Why did it take us, what, 17 years to get here? Longer? I don't I mean, know. It's almost not 20 the destination, now. it's the journey. Yeah, it was the journey, all right. To, to kill creatures murder. dead. I love this friggin' yeah. spell. I'm so excited it exists. I hope it exists in every core set for a long time to come. Yeah. Well, it's three mana. I'm Don't over the argue with me about mana cost. Mm -mm, it's not the part where we go, oh, three mana, this stuff, doom blade, and derp, derp, derp. Like, come on, buddy, it's murder. murder. If you keep yelling this, I think the cops are going to come. Fine. Murder. Mutilate. Mm. Ten years, buddy. Why? Why? Why did wizards have to change the art? The art was so good and creepy and scary. <laughs> I loved it. the hands melding into the face. Uh, oh, it was so good. I mean, the face is still melting. That's the yes, thing. but it's 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 not as good. So that melty face does not meet the original melty face. No, it's just not good enough. No, the, the first thing melty art faces? was just yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll melt your face. You would. I totally would. Yeah, too black. Gonna colors. put it in a microwave after I murder you. Put it in a microwave. Ooh, some popcorn in your melty face. <laughs> Mutilate, sweet. Mutilate <laughs> does some work. I'm excited. It took 10 years to reprint this friggin' card, which feels like way too long. Well, this is the role, right? White, they, they want to make more aggressive, so they're like, get Day of Judgment out of here. We'll give you planter guns, but we're taking Day of Judgment out. And Black, you get Mutilate. You're the, mm. you're the deck. Man, what about... I can't wait until we return to Ravnica, because I think they're moving Black towards more of a controlling color again. Finally. Yeah, I know. And maybe we'll get something sweet. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to be paired with blue. But you know what? If I Snapcaster my Mutilate, I'm still okay with that. It is not going to be paired with blue. Why wouldn't it be paired with blue? Because you have lingering souls. Chocolate, peanut butter. You have a Reese's metagame deck. Nephirox. Overlord of Grix Grixis. Yeah, baby. They put Grixis in the core set? Yeah, they did. Wow, I that did not sweet. know that. Oh, come on. I did not know that that name said Grixis. Okay, well... Guess where Nicol Bolas is from? I know he's from Grixis, yeah, but I man. didn't know. I didn't know like they're. I mean, the art. He's is a sweet. But he's a planeswalker. That, that doesn't make any sense. Where he's from? He just time travels. I don't know, man. Apparently, when you're a demon that big, they give he you brings a huge more staff. demons. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, sweet. Yeah, this card is like really good. This is just a terrific sort of way to you know have exalted be interesting and powerful, but you know easily grokkable, easily understandable. Yes. So. Yeah. 
I, I think the card is fantastic. I mean, it's a very scary card in Limited. It, oh. I think it could potentially be the finisher in some, some constructed decks, maybe. It's tough. It's tough, but it does work on its own. Like, it has the inevit inevitability that if it attacks, it will kill creatures as well. So, like, you'll always be able to, you'll be able to go on the aggressive and deal with creatures. I mean, it's a six mana, five, five, that turns into a six, six. Basically, a six mana, six, six, five. Yes. I think it's very good. Ooh. And it's scary to be on the other side of this. It's always going to two for one you, unless you can kill it. Like, you can maybe death touch spider it away. Maybe. Like, it's a tough, it's, it's insane and limited. And I, I could see it, like, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw it in a constructed deck. You know what you can do with this card? You can murder it. Can you murder it? You can murder it. You could say that about every creature. Shh. Ooh, Except not this one. one. <laughs> ah, Black Relich. Didn't even set that up, but we did kind of. Black Relich is sweet. One of those cards that it was really exciting in, what was it, M11, I think, this first day. Yeah, I, I actually, I... I sideboarded in in a couple matchups. Like I, I played it a couple times in limited. Really? Yeah. You, when you play against a mono black mirror, and you have yeah. a couple demon horns, and they can't really kill anything, and you're just like, bam. Demon boy. horns, baby. You go deep. Woo! Real deep. Now they didn't even print that card in this set for the first time ever. There's no lucky charms. You didn't make where's my lucky charms, wizards? I want my lucky charms mm -hmm. back. Coco puffs for you, son. Mm -mm -mm -mm. For Lactary Lich, it's a three mana five five that would like you know people saw like Dark Steel Relic and they were like, oh man, Mondo combo with Lactary Lich. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that dismember guy. This dismember would just stuff. Yeah, I mean this is going to exist in a world without dismember after yeah, a while. Yeah, and it's still gonna suck. Okay. Because I want to stack my artifacts to trade in post. I want to stack my artifacts. Now, public execution is sweet. The flavor of this card is unreal. Yeah. This card being an instant is ridiculous. Yeah, this this is awesome. Like, it, its flavor is really good. Its effect is very good. Like, I just, man, wi wizards. Yep. You know what I want to do? I want, like, when I'm ready to play this spell and, like, my opponent attacks me, I'm going to be like, just a moment. I'm going to take the creature right in the middle, and I'm going to pick the other <laughs> creatures around it so it can see it. And I'm going to kill his ass. It's going to be sweet. I am now, I promise you, if I ever am in camera, <laughs> I will do this at, at any go. tournament. That sounds awesome. Oh, I'm so sick. And like, all those guys saw and then, and, then, and then you'll like take them and be like, oh, no, oh my God. Oh, what no, did they do? Don't kill him. Don't kill him. This He's is actually what we do with our time. We get paid for this, man. What is going on here? Ravenous rats. I love ravenous rats. Now, they're not chittering. Now, the cool thing back yes. in the day, because I'm old, is that I could play in mono black, which was sweet back in the day with Persecute and Phyrexian Arena mm -hmm. and Kakusho, um, is that you could play turn two ravenous rats, turn three chittering rats. And yeah, and just chittering like rats wreck wheat. Yeah, chittering rats with Aether Vial. Oh, so good. And Chittering like, Rats is something that black returned. and a colorless 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, your opponent puts a card from their hand on top of their library. And there was some card that let you return creatures from play to your hand you had to. I played some really bad black deck. Wait, was like, this? It's some black creature. Back with Chittering Rats. Kind of like the Blood Clock or whatever it was from Kamigawa? Well, it was a standard legal with Aether Vial, and it was like a black creature that returned a creature, so you could like Chittering Rats them during their upkeep. I remember return. that there was a Chittering Rats lock. I can't remember yep. the exact sort of basis of it, but I remember playing Mono Black Control, and Ravenous Rats was sweet. Yes. And I would not count out the Ravenous Rats. I, no, I, I think it has potential. It's, it's a good not. Card. It doesn't have a good power toughness, but discarding a card is fine. Like It's a powerful ability. Mm -hmm. And the ability to cloud shift during their draw step or restoration angel during the draw step, I know it's All a little right, we're silly. passing after that. Fine, I went too deep. I went, we went too, too deep. deep. No. And from the depths, we rose from the grave. I bring the dragon back. And it yes. is now a zombie. <laughs> I loved it when they first made it. I love it now. It's a little more expensive, but you know what? You can, re you can reanimate anything from any graveyard. Yeah, you take their cards. It's so good. You just get the best creature that has ever existed in the game, and you put it back. It, it's an awesome card. And it used to be awesome because you couldn't Doomblade it. Oh, you couldn't Doomblade it. You can can do it. You can murder, murder. it. You can murder <laughs> Murder. <laughs> Kill it. Kill it you, with fire. You actually say murder the latest I've ever heard anyone. You can murder it. Oh, oh no. Stop murdering. We're gonna pause for a second. We're gonna pause. Fix your mic. Ding. 
Cause we're murdering, we're murdering. Hey, we're murdering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, servant of Nefarox. You know, you got to say that name. You know, you got Nefarox. 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 In a world of servants, there was Nefarox. In a world fraught by servants, <laughs> owned by Nefarox. That sounds like Xerox. Zero. Um, three mana, three one for an exalted. Aggressive. Check. On the curve. Check. Is good. Check. I like it. It, it C standard play? No. It's a, it's a no good check. limited card. It's a solid limited card. I love yeah. the art. I think the art is sweet. Yeah. Like something with blood, the hands, and I don't know what's going on with the little yeah, scale the, things the, the back there. And, and I like how they have like a like, little yarn or something there, going on there. Yeah. Strangs. Got some strangs on it. Just a weird woman. Shimmy Inspector. Hey, it's, it's just as terrible as it used to be. <gasps> Not true. You can still attack and take a prime. You've got to attack with the stuff and not get blocked. <laughs> Sign in blood is next, and I love it. It's very good. It's cool. It's just not friggin' for Brexian Arena. Why do you want Brexian Arena back so bad? Because that card is necessary for Black to rule. Yeah, but Black can never rule. I understand it'll be good, and I'm actually looking into a mono black deck for... Did I actually just say that mono black can never... Oh, God, I'm burning all the bridges wow. today. Wow. <laughs> there they went. Dude, Sign of Blood was sweet. It's just... You, you gotta be able to create card advantage from Black without losing a card for it. You know, arena. Trading post. You and those friggin' trading posts. I will prove I'm, you wrong. You would. I'm going to win the SCG Open Buffalo, and you're going to have to watch my finals. If I make finals, you have to watch it. Fine. I'll watch it. Sign yeah. blood. And then That's you know right. what we're going to be doing? Be like, told you, Evan like Irwin. trading post over here. And you'll have to kiss my trophy on GBTV. Fine. Deal? Deal. Good luck. Tormented Soul is cool, and I love this because I think Wizards R&D actually explained this perfectly in that Tormented Soul is interesting in this set because in, in M12 it was great because it enabled Bloodthirst. Yes. But in this set it's awesome because it works so well with Exalted. Yeah, just with both, it's really cute. It's yeah. so cool. It's super versatile. I think that's great. Yeah, no, I, I think it'll be good with Exalted. It's interesting because like it's just going to always deal damage, and that is cute. It's like, yeah. You could just see what we did there, but we're just going to tell you. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, we're just going to tell you. Now, look, I think flavorfully still, this card still kind of feels like a blue card to me. Torment, yes. You know, it's a ghost, right? Like, blue and white have spirits and stuff, and black just like, all right. And it's, and it's like a tormented soul. It feels more bluish. Like, it's sad and depressed. Wait, blue is sad? Well, but if it was a spirit, if you're like all the spirits that are in black are just mean and angry, uh, there's no way they're unblockable. They're they're thrashing about. Oh, they're ready to thrash. Yeah. Yeah. Vampire Nighthawk. <sighs> Value Town. We oh my got good. There. Predator is back. Guys, sweet. I know. Card is unreal. Art is fantastic. Thank you for not changing it. I just like this is like one of the biggest casual cards ever printed. Did you know that? Is it? It is one of the most popular cards ever. I, and yeah, I love this card. It's just like <clears throat> it always felt, even when it was printed back in Zendikar, it was just like, oh my god. Like on the power curve, this creature is way, way above. Way, way above. It races, as we were discussing earlier, 4-4. Yep. Four, four, no problem. It kills things. It gains you life. It has evasion. It's just like dot, 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 dot. Oh my god, it's I can't believe awesome. it's 3 mana. It's the awesomeness. Yeah, I mean, I. it's definitely not as good in M13 as it was in Zendikar. Okay. But it's still like... I, okay, so you only took two cards over Nighthawk in Zendikar. Fair. That was Melchior Blood Witch and Sorin. Right. You didn't take anything else over him. I don't think so. No, you never did. No. And if you ever got this card past you... You oh don't God. touch it. It's the plague. Yeah. You stay away from it. If you're at a professional event and you got past Nighthawk, it's like, the he took a black card. Nope. Yep. There you go. Yep. <laughs> the only reason that they took it was because they took a 4-1. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but the Nocturnus. He's not as good anymore because they didn't give you all the black one mana vampire guys. I'm really sad because... What? I want it to be good. People like the vampire deck. The card was I, good. It won an open. I know. I liked that everyone was so excited about their vampire decks in Constructed, and there's just not enough of them. Well, not right now. Are they what? going to put vampires in Ravnica? I think they're going to put vampires in Ravnica. 
They're just that, that would ruin the storyline. Uh, yeah, I know. It's like they make it up. Like Golgari needs something that isn't dredge. So Golgari? Vampires are gonna be green now? Why not? We're gonna have vampire tree folk? Yeah, that sounds just like awesome. Fangy tree Don't get are. too close to that branch, bro. I I'm can't like, wait. Oh god, oh the tree got me. Like, I just like Rosewater's watch. She's like, why didn't we think of this? Oh my god, <laughs> vampire tree folk this is brilliant. The best love story ever. <laughs> Was his bark <laughs> as good as his bite? Oh my god! Oh, physical pain! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I gotta keep it down. I gotta keep it down. It's okay. He'll be all right. <laughs> Baleborn ghoul. God help us all. Can't block. Man, he gives you advantage. He's an advantagey type of guy, but you this can't is, block because they're all like that. This is a teaching card. What's it? Teach me. Let's teach. Today we get to learn the value of blocking. And we sure would like to do it in this set, but we can't because it doesn't let you. And if you could block, this card would be insane, but you can't, therefore this card is going to be coming back to play just as they alpha strike the crap out of you. And you're like, what happened? Veilborn Ghoul is so good. And mm -hmm. they're like blocking it with their little dorks, so you're not getting a lot of value out of it. And you're gonna have to invest all this mana into it. And at the end of the day, it's five mana is probably spent on a variety of other things, uh, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. Very Vile good. Rebirth, however. This card is so awesome. Kind of sweet. Like, I just love the flavor. I love, like, zombie mirrors. Oh. Like, killing their messengers, killing oh. off their... Now, you have to make sure that you put the Undying trigger on the stack. And when, as the messenger is in the graveyard, you're just like, Vile Rebirth, get out of here. Vile Rebirth, <laughs> bonk your Strangle Root Geist, get out of here. Yeah, I, I actually really like this card. I don't think it's going to see, um, like... Main deck play, sideboard. It's play. going to be like That's the cyber card Definitely against the like graveyard card. strategies. Like it's even like nice Elish Norn. Nope. Oh no yeah. And barrel rights on that, my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mean, like you never really needed to like surgical your opponents or night hill spellbinder your opponents anyway. You always just need to get that one card with zombies because they're so fast. Yeah. That this card also just gets that card and puts a two two into play. Like, it stops their Moorlands haunts from activating, and it gives you a guy. It stops frights from basically and, doing anything. And it's just an instant speed two two out of your own graveyard. Like yeah. if you just need to put another guy on the board, get rid of my Highborn ghoul or whatever, and yeah. dork. You know? Yeah, this guy is awesome. I, I really like this card. Like, I'm not gonna play zombies because I just I'm not going to do it. Because I'm going to trade some posts uh, and bond some fires. Oh, yeah, you are. I, I played zombies online in the tournament practice room, and it's a very inconsistent deck in my experience. It like, is. I think the zombie pod deck's better, though. And I, I think agree. this is a, a good card. Like, it, it, There's no way zombies is bad. I mean, I think, well, I think zombies are getting way better now because you're finding all the right things, like Blood Artist and what you're supposed to be doing with these decks. So yeah. it's, it's, it's getting better, and the biggest problem is... The pro community has never latched onto the deck to make it better. Sure. And so well, it's people, but the the development that that like these open players are doing with it uh -huh. are great. Every other week, like the same guy made like back to back finals with a with a blue black zombie deck. Like true. And I think it's fantastic. And it won I, like the next week too. I know. I love zombie decks, and it's just terrific that you know, like back in the day, goblins just overran everything in onslaught, and zombies were just terrible. Yeah. And so now they brought back zombies, just like they brought back vampires, mm -hmm. and they made them good. Like they're like, we want zombies to be great. Here's Gravecrawler. Here's Drawth Messenger. And when you use them with these, some of these other cards, they're top tier. All Maybe of a I should just play this deck because I, I, when I'm playing it online, I find any excuse to just like. Caps lock brains, <laughs> brain brains. Dirtle. with your walking brains. corpse. Bears need to be black. So, I actually really like this card because black likes bears more than silver coat lions. I know I was giving silver coat lion a little tough time. You was giving silver coat lion some weird grief. I'm like, what are you talking about? All right, my family was eaten by lions. I see how it is. You eat one family, and all of a sudden, you're bad. Yeah, look. Anyway, <sighs> that's a walking course. But but half the head is gone. Is he a little space right there in his head? Yes. I like that. But I hate this card because it makes me think of The Walking Dead and it's not new episodes and I want them so bad. <laughs> Wits end. Best flavor text of I, this I have set. not actually read it. You get to indulge. Do I get to indulge yeah. it? All right, quote. Your pathetic ideas lie in shambles, Planeswalker. Where is your arrogant pride now? Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He brings it correct. Except for the misspelling. There's a misspelling? Pathetic. 
<laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Wow. They misspelled pathetic. You know, you know what that is? You know pathetic. what that is? Oh, 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 pathetic. Oh, that's come on. insane. You were pathetic. What? Pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> sweet. I love the artwork. If yeah, the flavor amazing. text were spelled correctly, it'd be way cooler. All right. I'll, what I don't get is like four sets ago, a Johnny and Tezzeret and Elspeth and Jace went up against Snickerballs, yep. and he still lives, and now Jace is like, yeah, I'm still good enough, man. Let's do this. Like, all my other guys are dead, but what's up? First gold card in the course set, what, what? <laughs> but this is great. This is hilarious, because I know, like, all the Watsy people who are watching this, and anyone related to the, you know, typesetting and the, mm -hmm. uh, and the editing is just, like, just going, like, wanting to shrink inside themselves that they misspelled pathetic. So many versions, so many eyeballs got to see that card and did not see it. Ugh. Xanthric Gorgon is so crazy flavorful. Holy cow. Yes. Except, I, I do believe, I am not a judge, but I do believe that the purification counter or petrification counter does yeah. nothing. It just is. Well, it, it does nothing unless this card's in play. No, 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 no. I mean, if you take the counter off, it doesn't change anything because it doesn't, from how it's worded, so mm -hmm. put, it, put it on. And then it gains Defender and becomes colorless. It gains that, but it's not the counter true. that gives it. The counter is there to show that it that yes. happened, right? Yeah, so just if you remove it or place, switch it, it still... It still is what it is. Fair enough. Yeah, okay. I was just... Uh, I just want to make sure. As far as I oh, can tell... I mean, tell, that's fine to still have the petrification counter because it, it makes sure you know what's going on. You want, I think, in each core set, a card very similar to this where it's like 100% flavor and it's just like tons of words, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter because like when you look at it and you put the words together and the flavor together, it all makes sense mm -hmm. and it all looks, you know, right. And it, with the picture, the Medusa, she's touching the guy who's turning to stone and all yeah. that, like just terrific. I, yeah. Flavor, I, the home run. The only thing I wish it was was a 5-5 five five, just because back in the day, I, I, I think of, no, just listen. Just listen. I just want to be a five five because I remember uh, Vasara and how scary that card was and dark it was, and how it like you know killed you and killed your creature and stuff. And like, it was like a card that scared me because it was right when I started playing Magic and like I was more emotional. Like I, I, I was not as jaded as I am now. I'm like, yep, nice bonfire, right? I'm dead. Here's two O. All right, have a good day. Just ignore. You know, like I would be like, man, if Vasara killed me. And oh my God, I've been burned in the bonfire. And for some reason, five five is a scary number. It might be a scary number, but she, she has a large toughness and she cannot lie. Other, but I can deny. Ah, uh, uh, Zombie Goliath. I like this card because it's nice and it's straightforward and it's been printed infinitely. I mean, I just love Zombie Goliath and then Zombie Giant. <laughs> Why couldn't it just been a Zombie Giant, Zombie Giant? Yeah, zombie Giant, Zombie Giant. Zombie Giant. Zombie Giant. Zombie Giant. Zombie Giant. Zombie Giant. He's a 4 3 for 5. Da 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 da. He's a 4 3 for 5. And he has got a big hole in his head, and the flavor text talks about if the hole in his head is so big, people could fit in there. That's awesome. Is that what it really says? Yes, and we're not reading it. Okay. okay. All right. So thanks, guys, for joining us for we our got Black Review. Two more. And you're going to be visiting with Brad Nelson. You're going to be visiting with me, Evan Irwin, and we are tapping the cards. So... so just tap them on your own. Just tap it. Yeah, tap we're done. It. We're done tapping the cards for you, know you guys. What? I, we're tapping more cards later, but right now we're not going to happen to be tapping we're not, more. Yeah, we're not going to tap any more cards. You tap them yourself. I'm all done. Yeah, all this done. It's over. like the fatties.